Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be continuing with the NumPy tutorial series in Python by showing you some basic operations on arrays. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to move you onto the screen. Okay, so we are in PyCharm, perfect, and we are doing NumPy tutorial 6. I couldn't get my fingers up then, 6. Um, and we are doing basic operations on arrays. And as usual, I've imported the relevant modules. So we have imported NumPy because obviously this tutorial series is on NumPy. So we need to import NumPy before we can use it. And again, if you're unfamiliar with how to import NumPy, I have mentioned it in the first video. So go check that out if you are unfamiliar. So we're going to talk about some basic operations on arrays and these are just kind of some mathematical operations, some simple ways of creating arrays and stuff like that. It's just kind of some nice operations that you probably will use as shortcuts throughout your time when you when you start doing a bit more with NumPy. So the first thing we're going to say is we can create an array between numbers like we can do with lists and the range command. So if you remember from lists, we could say, okay, let's take a list and we want the list in the range from zero to 10. Obviously one minus 10, it'd be nine. Um, if, you are, if you are unfamiliar with how that works, I'm gonna explain how it works for arrays, but it's very, very similar to how it works for lists as well. It's just a nice way of being able to say, well, instead of writing np.array and then one, two, three, four, five, say we want it all the way up to a hundred, Instead of typing that out, we can just say, okay, let's do in the range from zero to 100. Now it's different in arrays. We no longer have the range command. The command we have, so I'll just say in, um, when using arrays, we use the a range command. And we're just gonna show you what happens. So we're gonna start by saying let a equal our array. So the variable, this is gonna be our array. And we're just gonna say np.a range. Now we're going to say zero and we'll say five and I'm just going to print the this array and I'm going to show you what happens. So we're going to run it. Perfect. So what this has done now it has produced a one dimensional array and it's gone from the elements zero, one, two, three, four. Now the way that Python works is the value that you put in here, it's actually going to go up to the value of that value minus one. So here we have five get five minus one and it goes to four. Similarly, if we were to put, let's say 10 in here and we run it, it'll take 10 minus one and it'll produce that value. So we have nine. And that's just something that you need to kind of remember when it comes to using the range command for lists or for anything else and the a range command when it comes to NumPy. Because you may think, well, this is gonna create a, an array from zero to 10, but actually it does it from zero to nine. So that's just something that's worth bearing in mind. And we're just gonna say, move that back to five, click run again. And I'm just gonna put a comment here and say, this will produce zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'll put in brackets, remember it's four, not five. Just because you can make that mistake very easily when it comes to, to Python. Okay, so that's a way that we can simply create arrays within a given range. And it's also just a really nice way, say if you are beginning and you just want to practice manipulating arrays instead of having to write zero, one, two, three, four, we just say a range and it's it's perfect. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to cover in today's tutorial. The next is basic mathematical operations on arrays. Now don't worry if you don't have a great maths background, I'm doing the very, very simple maths kind of operations, which is like plus, minus, multiplication, things like that. And obviously because Python works as an incredibly fast calculator, it does it all for us. So we don't need to worry about understanding, you know, what is 100 plus 25, you know, Python will do that for us. So I'm just gonna say here, we're gonna create a new array, we'll call it B, and we'll just say, okay, np.array, and let's say in this array, we're gonna have, let's just have some random numbers. So four, six, 19, um, 23, and we'll just have 45, okay. Now, what I've done with this array is I've made it the same length or shape as this array here, just so then we can start doing some manipulation 
between these both both of these arrays so we can start adding and multiplying and stuff like that so it's worth noting that if you have two arrays and you want to do some basic mathematical operations on those arrays you need to make sure that they are both the same shape so i'm going to say here adding and all we're going to do is print a plus b okay let's run this okay perfect so what this has done here is it has taken b which is this array here obviously without the commas and it has added this array onto here so we know that a is this array here and i'm just going to put here in, in kind of hashtags and i'm just going to put here in hashtags what this array is you know obviously we can view this and think of it as a list because we see this but obviously it's it produces this because it's an array so what we're doing here when we add a plus b we add this array here to this array and what that means is this element will be added to this element this element will be added to this this will be added to this and then so on and so forth so obviously when we run we get 4 7 21 26 49 and that's because we've got 0 plus 4 is 4 1 plus 6 is 7 2 plus 19 is 21 and so on and so forth so that is how adding works so we'll just put here produces 4 7 21 26 49 now we're going to say subtracting and as you guessed it we're probably going to take the bigger array we'll say b minus a and i'll just put a hashtag there ready for when we find out what it is perfect so this has taken this array here and for each element it is minus each element in here so 4 minus 0 is 4 6 minus 1 is 5 19 minus 2 is 17 perfect so we'll just put here produces 4 5 17 20 and 41 perfect so again adding and subtracting really really nice now something we can do is we can square all the elements in the array a so the way we do that is we just put print a star star two now don't worry if you don't understand kind of what's going on with with you know say if ma your mathematical knowledge isn't that great all this is going to do is it's going to say so this notation here means squared and what squared means is we just take each element and we're going to times it by itself so we'll have zero times zero one times one two times two three times three and four times four and that will produce an array so we'll quick run and we'll see what it does perfect it's squared every single element within that array so we'll just put produces zero one four nine sixteen perfect so what you'll notice is we can do some really nice mathematical operations on arrays and obviously when it comes to data analysis sometimes you do need to do a lot of kind of com complicated operations on arrays and the way that i like to describe that is during my internship i did um, some programming for a uk space agency funded project and it was where i looked at a lot of satellite data and it was kind of you know to cut out all the complicated stuff it was essentially a lot of physics and in that physics there were a lot of kind of formulas for given um you know scenarios and i had to use those formulas um when it came to kind of figuring out radar data and stuff like that it's very confusing but the idea is that what's really nice about numpy is you can do these really really nice operations on them and it just helps when it comes to data analysis as i said so here we have squared a which is really nice now what's really nice is numpy actually has its own functions built in so what I mean by that is we can say, okay, let's take print, we'll take a, but what we're going to do is we're going to say np dot square root of a. So this np dot means that the square root belongs to np and np, you know, numpy has this function square root. And what we expect to happen is it will square root every element within a. So let's have a look okay it's gone it's gone slightly you know crazy because obviously we are squaring we are square rooting numbers that aren't kind of squares of, of numbers as it were so we do get some complicated stuff so if i was to just put in here maybe let's do this a squared because we know a squared is squared perfect we get zero one two three four so if you are kind of confused with the maths behind this all that's doing is we have 
A, it's squaring each of the elements, and then here we're just taking the square root. So it's essentially like adding one and then minusing one, you get back to what you originally had. So we'll just put here produces not one, two, three, four. Now the reason for the dot is just because that means it's a float, it's no longer an integer, and that's because when you square root you kind of sometimes expect for there to be um, some decimals after it. So we're just going to keep the dots in there, that just literally means not point, no, 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 no. Okay, so that's kind of showing you how NumPy actually has its own functions built in, which is really, really handy, and you can actually look at all the functions NumPy has built in, there are honestly loads. <laughs> I used a lot of them when it came to my internship, so... So let's say we have a again and we want to multiply everything in a by 3. So what we'll say is we'll say multiplying everything in a by 3 and we just say print a multiplied by 3 and we'll run this and perfect it's multiplied everything in that by 3 so 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. Um, you know these are just kind of some really nice operations when it comes to you know if you do kind of you know want to play around with them and see what else you can do it's just some really nice operations that you probably will use if you go into some data analysis job in the future uh, and now we're going to do another kind of basic nice um, mathematical operation and that's just finding out whether values in an array are less than a certain value so we're going to say um testing whether values in an array are less than a given value. So the way that we do that, we'll assign C to be a new array, and let's just create, make it simple. We'll have one, two, three, and four. So a very nice one-dimensional array. And we're simply just going to say, let's print C is less than two. Now watch what happens when I run this. Okay, so we have an array of booleans. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what booleans are, then I'd recommend just checking out the video where I talk about, you know, what booleans are. I'll put the link in the description. But essentially what this is saying here is, okay, we'll take one. One is less than two. True. Now two. Two is less than two. No, because two is equal to two. So that is given false. And obviously three is not less than two and four is not less than two. Now, if I was to change this to five, we know that all the values in there are less than five. So we get true, 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 true. So we'll move that back to two. And I'll just say here, this prints an array of booleans. And we'll just put here, we'll run it again, sorry. And we get true, false, false, false. Okay, perfect. So that's a really nice way of being able to test kind of in a given array what values are greater than, you know, given things. And the way that what you can do with that is you can say, okay, let's have this array, let's see, it may be um, students' shoe sizes, for example, and you may want to find out how many students' shoe sizes are less than, let's say, five. And then you can you get an array of booleans and it will tell you which are true and which are false and therefore you can kind of figure out you can find out how many true values are in that obviously there are nicer ways of, of doing that but that's just kind of an example okay perfect so we have that it creates an, an array of booleans so what we have here are some really really nice m nice mathematical operations on arrays and again, there are a whole load of extra ones. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some very specific kind of data analysis type commands that you can do on arrays. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss out on that video that's coming next. But this is just a really nice way of some really nice kind of mathematical operations on arrays. And again, how we can create an array um, without having to type out loads and loads and loads of 0, 1, 2 to 100 as can be seen in this section here. So that is the video today, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did then please like, subscribe and comment and don't forget to check out all my social media where I'm doing loads and loads of polls to ask all my subscribers kind of what they want to see so don't forget to follow me on social media and I will see you all in the next video.